Um, I just wanted to make a quick recommendation of this uh, book. I read it in Spanish, so both my commentary and pretty much all the information I have about the book, it's being written in Spanish. I'm not going to be able to read anything of it. It's The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. And I thought I would say a couple of words about it because I think it's a book that uh, definitely should be read. It's totally worth your time. Uh, but this is very a very precarious situation for me. I'm on the station and I have only a few minutes before my train goes. But because I'm so many books ahead, I thought that if I keep postponing the, the reading of this book, I will probably forget uh, most of the things about it or not even want to talk about it anymore and forget the reason why I wanted in the first place to, to talk about it. Um, also, I'm planning to read on the train a different book and then something else will be on my mind and yeah. Uh, time and logistics are not my fault. Uh, that being said, the unbearable lines of being it's a presents a paradigm, uh, not a paradigm, a dichotomy, a false dichotomy, in my opinion, between lightness and heaviness. Uh, heaviness be, uh, being commitment to an ideal, to a person, to monogamy, to multiple things, and lightness being sort of like. Uh, um, detached freedom, but freedom that you get through detachment, meaning through lack of commitment. That freedom makes you less significant, but obviously more free. While uh, the the heaviness makes you um, more significant, but less free. I this is represented through three different characters. I'm not gonna talk so much about the argument of the book. It's a um, relation between three people, mainly Tomas and then two of his lovers, Sabina, who, who would be more look like a light person in that sense, like more free, an artist, and Teresa, which would be who would be a heavier person, more committed to only him and feeling very impotent to not be able to limit his relationships. Um, so yeah, it's I'll. As non-monogamy goes, uh, it's not a very unconventional um, example of non-monogamy. I myself uh, have experienced uh, way more interesting uh, structures of, uh, um, of non-monogamy relationships. But uh, that's the thing that even though some people say it's an erotic book and it does have erotic scenes, uh, this is more of a philosophical work. and. Uh, it starts talking about Eternal Return by Nietzsche, which I always thought that is a very rich idea, but it's being overused uh, for what it is in Nietzsche's writings. However, Nietzsche is totally instrumental in this book, and, and um, it's only used as a mouthpiece to communicate ideas that, even though have nothing to do with him necessarily, because Nietzsche, for example, was not an animalist uh, or an anti-speciesist, but um, uh, Milan Kundera re reivindicates uh, him and his madness as uh, an expression of anti-speciesism. Um, those reflections, though instrumental, though using him instrumentally, are valid and and really well made, and uh, really nice literary um, exercises. I don't think that the book is uh, aesthetically, like in terms of form as good as some people puts it. Some people talks about this book as if it were, I don't know, like, or if it were coming from Orfeo's music or something like that. Um, so yeah, I, I think that what is interesting about the book is its content, it's, um, it's the reflections themselves. And yes, sometimes the structure, some chapters are preceded by other chapters. Uh, some chapters that precede other chapters are um, full of the, the definitions, very, um, very original definitions on certain words that will determine uh, what happens in the next chapter and there are almost like um, clues uh, that allow you to use to read the next chapter as a map in which you try to or a puzzle in which you try to fill the gaps of uh, understanding by using the previous definitions so it's an interesting read and it gets better I didn't like the book uh, through the first half I thought it was, uh, I thought it looked like my diary entry, you know, like it may be interesting reflections for oneself, but not enough to make a book. Um, 
it gets better and everything sort of like aligns and, and starts making more sense, the narrative becomes richer, the characters become deeper. Um, these chapters were like, uh, he will be telling you a dream but you don't know it's a dream until the end, so that confusion adds uh, positively to the narrative and to the experience of reading it. And um, going back to that lightness and heaviness, I, I said it's a false dichotomy because I believe that being alive and existing is by necessity already a commitment and com uh, being free and not attaching oneself to other people or to, all, or to certain ideals that are very explicit, it's still committing to the ideal of being free and not attaching oneself to anyone. So. I don't buy that, I don't think Milan Kundera did. I think it's a dichotomy that was very useful for the book to represent individuals that might see the world through that dual lens, but to be fair, um, the person that feels or acts as if they were detached from the world and carried non-ideals tend to be just ignorant of those ideals they are carrying and not committing to anything is committing to not commit to anything so it's a paradox and uh, it tends to be a um, toxic one often and this book does commit to many ideals and it does defend uh, it does criticize uh, christianity it did some reflections are very interesting for example uh, he talks about when he was a child um he thought that uh, if man was made uh, by the image of God, then God had a mouth, if he had a mouth he had God, if he had God he shut, and shit uh, is not compatible with God because shame, the shame that is sort of linked to eschatology, is um, it's uh, something human that we got with the fall, obviously God doesn't shit, right? So it, I thought it was a very interesting argument against uh, the anthropomorphic uh, the anthropomorphology of God and maybe to against uh, the, God, the existence of the Christian God at all. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, he, he says at some point that uh, shit is a much bigger theological problem than evil for Christianity. Another part, like another reflection, it's more on the, um, uh, towards the end of the book, it's more along the lines of uh, animalism and how the Genesis and uh, Christianity in general is, uh, used um, many of its uh, stories to justify the human domination of other animals and God was only an instrument to justify um, what we do to them. I, I totally subscribe that, that uh, reflection and um, I just recommend the book overall. I um, I have not much more to say because, as I said, I'm very I many I'm many books ahead. I haven't written anything about this book in English, so I'm kind of improvising and translating as I go. And I'm gonna lose the train. So have a nice day.